for the last three years, the Kwamboka ceremony of the laws speaking people has not been held due to various reasons. This year, the ceremony is back on this week's edition of News In Depth. We're going to be looking at the significance of this ceremony to preserving the culture in Zambia. I'm your host, Masaoso Mukwaya. Stay tuned. The Western province in Zambia is home to one of the most beautiful landscapes in the world. The province, which largely lays on whitish or greyish Kalahari, Wolosi Sands, houses the Barosi flat plains. The plains, which are also known as the Wolosi or Zambezi flat plains, are a vast, wide open area of land with a gradually rolling geographical structure lodging patches of green vegetation. This beautiful, or inspiring world class plain is not just a potential tourist attraction. Its waters and canals that sap water from the mighty meandering Zambezi River and its tributaries has for the last 200 years witnessed an outstanding living cultural heritage of the Lozi speaking people. The Lozis are also known as Malozi, which means people of the plain. The western province is made up of over 20 tribes, with Lozi being the most dominant and highest of the Litungaship. Conjecture theories suggest that Lozis migrated from North Africa and briefly settled in the Luba Lunda Kingdom into De Congo before moving to Barossaland, the now western province of Zambia. The first name that was given to the Lozi people was a noun called the Luyana, which simply means that they used to talk in a language which was called the Lui. Simply, that language was given to them by other people because they were people of the river. So they were Luyanas, and uh, they came from, we believe that they came from the further north of Africa, and then thereafter they settled in the Luba Luda kingdom, and then they came all the way from the north to where they are today. And since they were cattle owners, uh, briefly I can say that one of the brothers of our first queen called Mbuyu, whose name was Utoya, had discovered this plain. And that's why the, the Barotse plain has got another, another name which is called Ngulu Tayutoya because it was discovered by a brother of Queen Mbuyu, who is the first ruler of the Lozi people. So I think, uh, briefly, that's how, then around 1830, they were conquered by the Kololo people who came from the south. Uh, though the only difference is that they were not captured and taken to the other place, but they were captured in their own mother land, and now the Kololo people from South Africa uh, had ruled them for about 30 years till 1864 when they restored their kingship. The monumental Barossi floodplains, whose main body covers about 5,500 square kilometers, are the singular and sole location of the Lozi's unifying ceremony, the Kuomboka. The Kuomboka, which means imaging out of the water, is an annual ceremony where the Lozi king, the Litunga, whose name means the earth, or owner of the earth, or land, moves from the flood prone Lealui Palace, which lies west of Mongo town. Lealui was first identified by King Supopa around 1864. He camped there briefly. However, in 1876, King Luwos Lewanika established Lealui as a permanent palace for the Lozi kingdom. Since then, Lealui has been the summer home for all Litungas. However, this area which lays at the western lower edge of the floodplain gets flooded at the height of the rainy season. As a result, the Litunga and all his subjects move to an upper land located in Limulunga. Ideally, the Kumboka is supposed to be an annual ceremony, but it has not taken place since 2013. Kumboka has not been taking place for the past three years because of other reasons. The first year was that there was no water, the second year there was no water, the third day that we lost our queen, so we could not have a Komboka. But this time round, we are going to have a massive and a nice and a, a joyous Komboka. 
but a lozi historian and traditionalist says the only concrete prerequisite for the kuomboka to take place are high water levels. He says the ceremony can still take place without the queen. Mostly it's the water levels that can prohibit the kuombokas from taking place. Can the kuomboka take place without the queen? When the elders advise, at a rightful time, it can take place. It, because, you know, the lost culture is, there's a protocol of following what the elders say. For the first time in three years, the Kuomboka was held on April 8th, 2017. On the evening before the ceremony, the Lozi King comes out of his palace to beat the Maoma drums. The Litunga, King Nuwasi Imwiko II, came out of his Lealui Palace to beat the nine royal drums at about 21 hours. He beats the nine drums in a rhythmic and charismatic customary manner to summon over 180 paddlers from across the Lozi Kingdom. Upon hearing the drums, the paddlers are expected to report to the rural village without fail. The drums are echoed over 70 square kilometers away. The Lozi tradition has it that the Kuomboka can only be held amidst a full moon. Mysteriously, just after Kindu was Imwiko II was done beating the drums, the moon was unusually glowing, full and bright. The Maoma drums are only owned by the king. No one else in the entire Lozi kingdom owns them. The Maoma drums are also known as war drums. In an event of war, the drums are beaten to summon warriors to assemble in the royal village to defend the king and their kingdom. In contemporary times, the Maoma war drums were last beaten in 1993 when the late president Chiluwa attempted to arrest the Litunga for what the Lozis felt were mere tribal attacks. The Maoma drums are also beaten to announce the presence of very important visitors in Baroseland. In over 120 years, the Maoma welcome drums have only been beaten twice. The first time they were beaten in the early 1900s when King George VI visited Baroseland. The last time the Wokam Royal drums were beaten is in 1960 when Queen Elizabeth II visited Baroseland. Uh, the Mbaoma drums in olden days, they, they were beaten, they were called war drums in olden days. Uh, that was prehistoric times, you know, around 1880s and you know, at that, that time, uh, you know, they were just beaten when there was war, when people went to fight, and then it called, called the warriors in the capital to assemble and they, they can go for fighting. The Mahoma drum ritual precedes the Kuomboka. The following morning before the king and his guests of honor emerge from the Lealui Palace, some traditional drums and dances are displayed to entertain people who gather outside the palace from all over the world to witness the Kuomboka. some time in seclusion, the Litunga and his guest of honor, President Ed Galungu, walked out of the Litunga's summer lower land palace. Fully clad in a brownish royal traditional kilt known as the Siziva, complemented by a modern paper bow tie with a white shirt and brown socks, the Litunga majestically walked out of his palace. The majestic walk to the Nalikwanda, which was docked on the shores of the Barose Plains, at the edge of the Lealui rural village is a stretch of about 800 meters. The Litunga walks while wagging his royal fly whisk. A red barrette with an elephant imprinted on it rested on his head. His guest of honor, President Ed Galungu, was wearing a green siziba extending slightly below his knees. 
President Lungu's Siziba was accompanied by a black bota and black shoes distinguished by a snow white shirt. This is one of the attire which they have been putting on from time to time, more, more especially on the occasions like this one of Gomboka, when there is some ceremony like Ngomalume, find the lot of people they put on Siziba, the women they put on Misisi. President Lungu was also carrying a well-polished wooden walking stick on his right hand. The walking stick was given to him by the current Litunga in 2015. The two leaders magnificently worked together side by side, demonstrating royalty and the presidency respectively. <laughs> A few meters away from the Narikwanda, the Litunga and his guest of honor are briefed on the Kuomboka by a senior member from the Barose Royal Establishment. After the brief, the Litunga led President Lungu in boarding the wooden royal insignia. Sometimes, I don't know, it's maybe good to hold them. It should be very interesting this year because even the boat has been enlarged. It used to carry 120 paddlers. This year, it will be carrying 180 paddlers at a time. So for us, it's something very exciting. The first wooden Nalikwanda in Lodzi history was built in the 1930s by Arthur Harrington, father to former tourism minister William Harrington. He built it for King Lubosieta II. Before that, the badge was made with local reeds. It was called the Njololo and later Linene, meaning a white thing which resembled a traditional giant altar. In a straight line, the distance between Nealugi and Limulunga is about 20 kilometers. The same distance would take just about 20 minutes by car. However, the Nalikwanda takes over six hours to move from Lealui to Limulunga. Even though the Litunga's Nalikwanda is the center of attention during the Kuomboka, it is not the only canoe on the waters. The Kuomboka is a grandiose flotilla of human canoed boats. Women are not allowed to board or let alone to be near the royal barge. They steal the vista from a distance where they will let as a sign of paying homage to their kin. <coughs> the National Heritage Conservation Commission is a government institution tasked with the responsibility of conserving culture and the nation's heritage. The commission says traditional ceremonies are so important to the country's well-being because they offer the best definition on what Zambians stand for. Our traditional ceremonies are actually an integral part of our culture. They are an integral part of our, um, our history and also um, our, our basically our origin and our well-being. And um, when you look at it from a, a heritage point of view, uh, we, we are seeing traditional ceremonies as part of uh, a lifestyle that is aimed at preserving what is truly ours. There are a lot of aspects of culture that actually have a bearing in terms of how a country is supposed to develop and also trying to uh, forge ahead in terms of where the country will be, will be going. And in fact, you will discover that some of the most industri industrialized countries in the world today are countries that have properly preserved them um, their culture. The Ministry of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs has reviewed that traditional ceremonies are on government's top agenda. Traditional ceremonies are a unifying factor. Uh, it brings together the, the various cultures in the country and uh, it, it brings peace because it brings in all these different cultures together. Well, as government, we have been supporting and promoting uh, various uh, ceremonies uh, it is to uphold the cultures uh, that they hold 
and uh, we uh, so, uh, support them by giving them uh, grants so that they are able to hold these uh, cultures. President Ed Kalungu is on record of promoting oneness in the country. He has been emphasizing the need for all Zambians to regard themselves as one people living in one nation. Minister of Presidential Affairs Fidom Skazwe has hinted that President Lungu wants to use traditional ceremonies to promote peace in the country. These ceremonies are a unify, unifying factor because the people who come are not from one tribe or from one region. When we talk of the traditional ceremony, we expect other people from other provinces to come and see and also be part. That's a way of trying to bring people together. We want to enhance the issue that the president is preaching of one Zambia, one nation. And traditional ceremonies like uh, Kuomboka are one of those that can be used to bring people together. Many observers and admirers of the ceremony also agree that the Kuomboka promotes peace. The importance of Kuomboka is that it unites us, the Lozi people and the whole lot of Zambia. Yeah, our traditional importance is that, you know, we gather people from different countries, they come here to celebrate. Well, the traditional ceremonies in Zambia, they are highly attracting the tourists. And in fact, even to change our economy. Because there are some people are coming outside the country to support us financially and even to witness the same ceremony. When they come here, they have to stay here. We have to feed them. We have to protect them. So I think it's... Uh, the economic change in our country. While traditional ceremonies have been credited for their ability to promote peace, others want ceremonies to be used as a cultural attraction to put tourists from all over the world. You know, a culture is what makes a people. You can identify people by their culture and their tradition. So when we host traditional ceremonies such as the Kwamboka which we have today. I think for us it is something that we really need to, to, to promote because it is through such type of activities that we are able to tell the world who we are. You know there are about 73 ethnic groupings in Zambia that form Zambia. And for us to understand each other we must be able to know each other through our you know, beliefs, cultural beliefs, which we can only exhibit through traditional ceremonies such as the Komboka. Komboka is not just about getting into a boat and going. It has its significance. If one wants to know about the Lozi people, who the Lozi people are, what the Lozi people worship, what the Lozi people believe in, one has to come to a ceremony like this one. Unlike the Barossa floodplains that are flooded with water during the period of the Komboka, the host town, Mongo, is flooded with an influx of people from different parts of the world. Majo Imowita is a manager of a group of businesses located in Mongo. One of the businesses she manages is a restaurant. Majo shares what is on her menu of experience regarding Kuomboka and business. In fact, we are very happy. We have a lot of customers here at Zambia and Touch. So our business will be good. We, we, we would like the government to support more these cultures to be done all the time. Especially Kumboka ceremony has been here for a long time, maybe three years ago. So now we are very happy. We are very happy because here we have a restaurant, a bar and a boutique. And we have another Zambian touch there at Shop Ground, yeah? where we have a restaurant, a boutique and a lodge. Even the, our lodge now is full booked. So we are very happy at Zambian Dutch. Minister of Finance Felix Mutati knows too well the potential of tourism in contributing to the diversification agenda. Mr. Mutati says government wants to support culture tourism as a means to widen its revenue collection base. The drivers of tourism and the key driver from my perspective is traditional ceremonies. You have seen what this ceremony has been able to bring together what the Komboka means, first of all, from unifying not only the people of Western Province, but bringing the various people from within Zambia and outside, bringing them in a common space where they are sharing the experiences of culture, they are sharing 
the experience of, on how they can together bond to move the country Zambia forward. So for me, it's a good generator of revenue. It's a good generator of the diversity that we want to achieve within the sector of tourism. And for me, this is a key diversity pillar that we must continue to emphasize. Let's expand on it. Nonetheless, the Ministry of Tourism is saddened that cultural tourism is only being promoted once in a while because traditional ceremonies are only held once a year. Let us not always wait for the national event because such performances can be hosted on weekly, uh, weekly basis in different places, for instance, hotels and lodges and parks. If you go to Sioma, for instance, there are very beautiful lodges there. There's a very beautiful falls in Sioma. What other attraction can we add? What is it that we can show to the people that go to visit the Sioma Falls? It's the culture. Once every week, every Saturday, people should be able to know that once you go to Sioma every Saturday, you go and watch the Makishi dance at such, such a place, and after that you go into the Liyua National Park to view game, you go and see the Sioma Falls. So it forms part and parcel of the culture. It is up to us now to identify ourselves with our dances and our customs, and when we can present them, because people are moving every day. It's not only, one, not only once a year, people are moving every day. And the Minister of Finance shares the Minister of Tourism's concerns. Mr. Mdati says it is difficult to attach economic value to traditional ceremonies because the monetary potential they create is one off and thus difficult to sustain. I, I think one of the limitations that we have suffered as a country, not only for the Kombokam, for the Nchala, Kusefa Pangwenyam, for Mutombokam, all these big ceremonies have been treated as annual events and therefore you have a spike of sharing culture of revenue and for the rest of the year nothing basically happens. What we must begin to think is how can we have a continuous and sustainable process of one continuously sharing knowledge and culture creating, for example, museums in the local areas, creating other events that lead to the maximum event, such as this one, perhaps on a quarterly basis, so that people are galvanized in one particular direction. So I would call upon our traditional leaders, the committees that are supporting them, the corporate world that is supporting them, that let's create a sustainable platform, because knowledge can't ingrain only for a couple of hours. It is a continuous process. But the provincial administration has plans to draw up modalities to host frequent cultural activities that will keep the province busy throughout the year. As a province, what we are hoping to do uh, in the future when people come for the Pomboka ceremony is to expose them to other tourist attractions that are found in the province. We have the Liwa Plains National Park, we also have uh, uh, the Sioma Gwezi Falls as well as the National Park and by the way just uh, in the next few weeks uh, the, the pro flight we are supposed to be launching a flight direct from Osaka into, into Kalavo with the view of uh, promoting and uh, uh, having easy access into the Liwa Plains. I'm sure you are very aware that the uh, Liwa Plains has uh, got the second largest migration of all the coast in Africa after the Serengeti in East Africa. So that is also an event that happens annually. And we have seen quite a lot of people coming from outside the country. Meanwhile, a trend has emerged where sponsors of traditional ceremonies are mounting pop-ups scribbled with various marketing messages at traditional arenas. And this trend that is seemingly watering down the authenticity of traditional ceremonies has unsettled the National Heritage Conservation Commission. The commercial entities have also seen that traditional ceremonies can actually become a catalyst. There can be a marketing point or forum for their, for their products. And I think uh, uh, recently I attended a traditional ceremony where, of course, I mean, we had so many pop-ups such that, uh, you know, a, a visitor who is just in, passing by will not actually know whether this is, whether the gathering is for a traditional, uh, you know, activity or not. But I think what we wish to state as a commission is that uh, uh, we, we need to 
uh, mind the fact that even though, of course, yes, we have contributed towards the, uh, the traditional ceremonies, possibly as commercial entities, we also need to bear in mind the importance of retaining the authenticity of a culture or a ceremony. Because if the entire setup is clouded with so many commercial adverts, the, you know, the pop-ups, whatever, you find that it basically alters uh, the authenticity. Meanwhile, after sailing and meandering for more than six hours in the ancestral and recently dredged canals on the Barose floodplains, the Nalikwanda, the majestic emblem for the Litunga, made its final approach towards the Limulunga harbor. The Nalikwanda was escorted by several other sweeper canoes. Throughout its six hours journey from Lealui to Limulunga, the Nalikwanda sails with a cloud of thick smoke in front of the enclosing where the Litunga and his guests sit. The smoke means the Litunga is alive and in good health. After the Royal Barge docks, Maoma drums are beaten once more to announce the arrival of the Litunga at the Limulunga Palace. Uh, the significance from around 1880s coming down, uh, they are beaten uh, as a symbol of kingship because none in the whole of Obulozi, in the whole of Western Province, owns those drums apart from His Highness, our King. That's why the other term for him is called Mbumu Umbetelwa Maoma, which means the king who owns the, those Maoma drums. And they specifically belong to him. No one is allowed, to, no any person, a prince or a princess, is allowed to have those types of Maoma. They are a symbol of royal insignia. They are symbols of power. After about five minutes, the Litunga alights from the Nalikwanda alone, without his guest. The Litunga is also seen wearing a different attire, the British Admiral uniform. The uniform is a military uniform. It was first blended into the Lozi culture somewhere in 1902. It was given to King Luwos Lewanika I by King Edward VII during King Edward's coronation. The admiral uniform was given to King Luwosi to appreciate his loyalty. The guest of honor, President Edgar Lungu, disembarked from the Nalikwanda somewhere along the way. The president then headed to Limulunga to receive the Litunga together with thousands of other spectators. The Litunga, together with his guest of honor, walks for about a kilometer on an uphill road that leads to the upland winter Limulunga Palace. The entire route is covered by spectators and tourists from different parts of the world. Once at the palace in the visitors' arena, the Litunga and President Lungu sat to observe indunas and paddlers display some song and dances meant to thank ancestors for moving the Litunga from Lealui to Limulunga safely. After a few minutes, King Lugos Imuiko II ushered his guest of honor into his winter home. This marks the climax of the Kuomboka ceremony. Somewhere around August, when the waters in the Barose floodplains recede, the Litunga ceremoniously heads back to Lealui in a ceremony called Kufuluhela. However, this reverse ceremony is not publicized. It has been acknowledged that traditional ceremonies play a very important role in unifying the country. Stakeholders have further noted that these ceremonies promote economic activities in different localities around the country. On this week's edition of News in Depth, we have been profiling the Kuomboka ceremony of the Lozi speaking people. I have been your host, Masauso Mukwayaya, Lutumezi Aulu, please and viewing.